go ahead and get moving here. So uh, first thing, thanks everyone for hopping on. Um, really appreciate the attendance. Carl Fry, our uh, lead engineer here at EITS, is going to be presenting on uh, malware blocking and using um, Palo Alto Networks autofocus and mind melt. It's got a phenomenal presentation together here for everyone. I know you're going to enjoy it. I encourage everyone to go out to our website, eits.com slash webinar, webinars. Um, you'll be able to see the future webinars we have coming up. Um, we're on the ninth one here, so uh, things are flying by. Um, really appreciate everyone's time. Hope you get something out of it. Thanks a lot. That said, I'm going to hand it over to Carl. Thanks, Leo. Hey, good day, everybody. Hope everybody's going well this morning for us. Um, I'll get right into this, and uh, let's kick this off. So uh, a little bit about me. I'm a former Marine. I... Uh, Worked in the financial and healthcare industries with a focus on infrastructure and security. I'm a big fan of open source. Um, if, you, if you've met me, I have a zero trust model. So, so typically, I like to grant privilege and access from there as needed. And I also believe in the KISS methodology for all things IT, including security, you know, keeping it simple. So in that regard, um, autofocus and mind melt can give you a starting point for your threat hunting or take organizations uh, threat hunting to a new level of maturity. So in a past life, um, in a SOC, we, we saw a lot of inconsistencies with threat hunting. So I like what autofocus, and I like what the, the Palo Alto platform provides you, okay? So the uh, definition of, uh, or my definition of autofocus is that it is a cloud-hosted solution that offers unique researcher curated context from Unit 42, which is the Palo Alto Networks Threat Research Team. Uh, it includes information on malware families, adversaries, campaigns, malicious behavior, and exploits used. Operationally, it can be helpful for staying up to date with ever-changing URLs, domain names, and geo opponents. So the requirements for autofocus is that it's offered as a hosted security service that must not require any configuration changes to your Palo Alto Networks next generation firewalls and does not impact the device's performance either. In order to use the service, you must have a valid Palo Alto Networks support account, even if you have purchased next gen firewall or traps. As autofocus is not hardware dependent and does not require any changes to the device, there is no specific NOS software versions or additional hardware needed. We recommend subscribing to Wildfire which is on NOS 4.1 or higher to take full advantage of autofocus. We debated this uh, a little bit internally as to the, uh, the, the thoroughness that you can get out of uh, autofocus without it. Yes, you can still use autofocus without wildfire, but you certainly get much, much greater value add. And definitely from a zero day perspective and in a real time threat hunting perspective, it is more value add. So uh, my, my definition of mind melt is that it's an open source threat intelligent processing tool that extracts threat indicators from various sources and compiles the indicators into multiple formats. It's a mechanism for getting the content derived from autofocus into an actionable format. So if you wanted to get your hands on autofocus and mind melt, um, remember autofocus is a cloud offering by PAN. And if you want that, uh, please contact your local Palo Alto Networks representative or contact us at info at EITS. So MindMeld is an extension of autofocus in the cloud. As previously mentioned, it is also an open source tool that you can get your hands on. I'll have a link, but it is github.com slash Palo Alto Networks slash MindMeld. So, when I, when I speak to customers and when I you know, talk to friends and other security folks, I like the Palo Alto platform, right? And I like the way they are going about addressing, right? We're going to talk about uh, auto folks in my mind, but understand data is king, right? Um, you know, Google knows a lot about you. Amazon knows a lot about you. It's about that time that you know a lot about you and your organization. So uh, aggregating, correlating, and finding anything uh, in your data is difficult. So security tools and research already depend on the cloud whether you want to admit it or not. Standing up and maintaining a SIM can be difficult and expensive. So leveraging autofocus should be easier from a procurement perspective. 
I bring this up not because it is malware related per se, but rather SOC analysts and engineers spend way too much time already attending change control meetings and drawing fancy diagrams and justifying headcount. No, let's, 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 if we can, let's have those guys with SOC analysts and engineers focusing on threats, you know, threats of organization, internal and external. So uh, Palo Alto Networks allows for the aggregation of your data along with that of your industry peers where you can do something with it. All right, so I start off autofocus with not even talking about autofocus. So I, I talk about Unit 42, and Unit 42 is the Palo Alto Network's threat intelligence team. They're made up of accomplished cybersecurity researchers and industry experts. Unit 42 gathers, researches, analyzes, and provides insights into the latest cyber threats and shares them with Palo Alto Network customers partners and the broader community to better protect enterprise service providers and uh, government computing environments. Unit 42 also unearths adversary groups by analyzing data collected from the Palo Alto Network's security platform to provide contacts into an attacker's motivations and methods. Using critical intelligence requirements, uh, they determine what, it, what data is necessary to answer questions about threats to Palo Alto Networks and their customers. We collect, or they collect this data from both internal and external sources and run it through a detailed threat analysis process. Unit 42 is fully supported by Palo Alto Network's engineering team, which offers years of experience in detecting and preventing attacks in the enterprise. So if you look, if you sign up, to, uh, if you go to their website you, that's on the screen, you can um, look at a, a lot of great info, right? It's right there at the tip of your fingers. Um, this, this kind of appeals to my open source love that we're sharing data. So some of the recent blogs include new techniques to uncover and attribute cobalt gang commodity builders and infrastructures revealed. Uh, another one was uh, threat debrief, embrace mobile banking with caution. Uh, another one was detecting malicious campaigns with machine learning. And lastly, um, they, they had some research associated with the uh, October 2018 Adobe disclosures, right? So I think this is pretty good because we all know that, you know, hey, Patch Tuesday is going to come and Adobe and they're, they're all going to release a ton of updates. So they're, they're going to do some of the analysis for you and say, this is what's going on in each of those um, updates. They regularly work with Microsoft, Adobe, Apple, Google, Android, and other ecosystems. By proactively identifying these vulnerabilities, developing protections for customers, and sharing the information with the security community, Unit 42 is removing weapons used by attackers to threaten users and compromise enterprise, enterprises, government, and service provider networks. Um, they are also um, a member of the Cyber Threat Alliance. And I, sh I share this with you because some of the other members of the Cyber Threat Alliance are Alien Vault, um, Checkpoint, Cisco, Dragos, Fortinet, Juniper, McAfee, uh, Rapid7, Reversing Labs, Sofo, Semantic. There's, there's, there's more, right? I just ran through it um, really quickly. Um, and I, and I, I share that with you because that, that's part of the giving back, right? So Cyber Threat Alliance sharing is grounded in five guiding principles. Uh, the first one is for the greater good. They protect customers, strengthen critical infrastructure, and defend the digital ecosystem. Time is of the essence. Uh, they prevent, identify, and disrupt malicious activity by rapidly sharing timely, actionable intelligence. They bring context to these rules. Uh, they reward context sharing to identify an indicator and provide useful information about it. You gotta have, well, the other, look, this one, radical transparency. They attribute intelligence to the member who submits it, but anonymize any and all victim and sensitive data. And lastly, you have to give in order to receive. So each of those members that I just rattled off, including Palo Alto Networks, they require all members to share a minimum, of intel a minimum amount of intelligence with the Alliance to prevent the free rider program. All right, so autofocus. Uh, autofocus came out of Unit 42's internal threat hunting some time ago. And early on, when it was only for internal use, it went down one day. And because, it, and because it became so integral to their daily task, they had to go home, right? That's how much they depended on it. Well, some guy said, this is a great idea. 
let's let's pay it forward and let's let's make it available to our customers. It became such um, so good um, that we can enjoy that today, and we actually continue to make it better. So you can use autofocus to make sense out of all the threat information in Palo Alto Networks threat intelligence uh, cloud or tick. So I've captured some buzzwords and some marketing material, and um, I'm just gonna share it with you because I think it's, it's important to know like some of the key features of autofocus, okay? So again, it's, it is an extension of the Palo Alto Network Security Operating Platform. With autofocus, threat context is available natively in PanOS and Panorama, as well as an open API for integration into third-party systems. Uh, it's high fidelity threat intelligence on day zero through native integration with the wildfire data set. Autofocus enables security teams to distinguish the most important threats from everyday commodity attacks, contextualizing events on your network or public data with tags. Unique to autofocus, tags label threat events with malware families, campaigns, threat actors, malicious behaviors, and exploits used. When a tag matches an event on your network, Autofocus sends a priority alert via email within the Autofocus dashboard or via an HTTP post with the full tag context included. So uh, alerts are highly customizable, enhancing your existing security workflows with prioritization and context for the most critical threats. All right, that was a windfall. Give me a couple minutes and I'm almost done. So typical exports are rich CSVs text and JSON, including metadata content from autofocus. So you can import that directly into your SIM or use the um, next generation of firewall external dynamic list. The autofocus API is a RESTful API, which allows for further SIM integration or other custom uses. It also has out of the box integration with the six data format. So um, right there, I mean, you should be able to say, I can incorporate this, um, all of this content into my workflows today or build new workflows. So for six, it's structured threat information expression. All right, so some customers ask me now, uh, do I really need this product? We have solutions and we have intelligence. I say, okay, great. Um, does your intelligence gathering techniques remain consistent? And I, I think that's important because I've seen this before where you have multiple threat hunters or threat intelligence seekers and they all do it differently. And yes, there's some benefits to doing it differently, but there's no consistency, right? So there's no value or there's no additional values to be gained as it's done, uh, done inconsistently. So I also say, can other team members jump in and pick up the slack as it relates to threat intelligence and threat hunting? So besides the hot new malware, that's you know the top of your newsfeed, do you know what actual threats are happening on your endpoints and inside your networks? Right, that, that might seem kind of uh, like a simple you know, question. Of course I do, really. Do you, do you actually look at the threats that are taking place on your network minus the events, right? Are, are you, if something does happen, if you had an event, do you go back to root cause analysis? Are you doing that due diligence, right? All these things help. So autofocus helps get you started with threat hunting using your company and industry's data. So. From, from getting started, you can start maturing the process of uh, threat intelligence in your awareness process. Um, I also ask, does your SIM already provide you with enough event fatigue, whereas the idea of scouring the internet for threat intel make you want to turn off the monitors and join one of your company's many wasteful meetings? It doesn't have to be, right? Um, so let, let's get some structure around it. So autofocus makes hunting for evil easier, and then provides the platform for added visibility and subsequent automated workflows. It also makes SOC operational tasks easier. Um, so for example, um, by extending the existing features of the external dynamic list on the PAN firewalls to dynamically leverage new threat intelligence, I can send that information to the firewall, right? And I can do it in such a way that I don't have to open up the change control every time. Um, you know, one, one of the important things I would say is uh, have your run books, you know, bless, you know, have your compliance guides. You guys might be at a more of an immature shop, but that's not needed. Um, 
change controls is a necessary fact of life. You know, so adding an IP to a block list can be painful, right? Um, these tools can help, you know, get you that visibility to stop traffic from ingressing, as well as allowing specific traffic to egress. Okay, so my melt. Uh, you're using threat intelligence to enforce security policy. Uh, it poses several challenges. Sources of threat indicators often place indicators in multiple formats or format them inconsistently. Uh, MindMeld automates many of these manual processes so that you can use indicators to dynamically enforce policy with your firewall or to investigate threats with autofocus. There are three types of MindMeld nodes. Uh, that make it possible to automate the flow of indicators from source to destination. The first one are miners. Uh, they extract indicators from sources of threat intelligence, such as threat indicator feed or a threat intelligence service like Autofocus. A couple of well-known miners include Anomaly, Alien Vault, Emerging Threats, right? So if you already have a subscription, you can continue to levy your, levy your excuse me, leverage your existing subscription, right? And just to incorporate that into your workflow with, auto, uh, excuse me, with MindMill. So uh, these indicators can include IPv4 information, domain information, URL, mutex, user agents. So uh, the next type of node are uh, processors and processors receive indicators from miners and can aggregate indicators, eliminate duplicated indicators, and merge different sets of metadata for the same indicator. So for example, a common type of processor is one that receives only IPv4 indicators. Uh, out, outputs, so obviously we had to take all this data in and we actually have to do something with it. So outputs receive indicators from processors in MindMail. Uh, output nodes format the indicators and allow MindMail to dynamically send the indicators to one or more destinations. Um, so, for, for example, MindMeld can send this, the indicators from the external threat feeds to autofocus or to your firewall. They can do so you know, by including IPs. They can do it via um, domain names, so you can use it maybe for perhaps sinkholing, um, and also URL addresses, right? Allow or block traffic from, from a URL perspective. Um, some more um, information about it. Uh, MindMill provides aggregation and correlation of any third-party threat intelligence provider with the MindMill application for autofocus, including the automated extraction and sharing of high-value indicators for prevention. Using the automation of MindMill and external dynamic list may change your change control nightmares. Right? So, right, lots of buzzwords were just thrown at you, but what you should take from all that is simplicity, uh, workflow and repeatability, right? And so this is taking lots of content and making it into a digestible format that is actionable. Okay, so we've, we've, we've got a couple um, use cases that we're gonna go through, right? But just keep in mind that um, in this, this uh, environment that we're gonna show you, it's, it's limited to read only. The autofocus environment doesn't allow for us to sync my meld information back to the firewall. However, after configuring the certificate, well, let's talk about that for one second. You gotta keep in mind that there's a relationship between your firewalls and um, your sources, right? So make sure that you configure your certificate of choice on the MindMeld website, uh, and then you create a more focused and environmental specific external dynamic list. So what that means is on the, there, there's a certificate store, inside of autofocus, right? And it says these are, these are the certificates we'll support. Um, on the firewall, you have certificate profiles which define which certificate authority certificates to use for verifying client certs, how to verify those certificate revocation status, and how that status constrains access. You select the profiles when configuring certificate authentication for the captive portals today, Global Protect, site-to-site -site IPsec, VPNs, uh, web interface access to firewalls and panorama. So this shouldn't be anything um, super new, but you also do it for the external dynamic list. This is how you protect what you're ingesting into your firewall. You can configure a separate certificate profile for each of these services. 
The certificate profile you select must have root certificate authorities and intermediate certificate authorities that match the certificates installed on the server you are authenticating to, right? That's the destination. Uh, you can also enable client authentication if that list source has a, an HTTP US URL and requires basic uh, HTTP auth for list access. Um, we're not gonna go through an example of a domain export, but a good use case for them would be to add them to your anti-spyware policy with your ported over uh, EDL with an action to sync all these bad domains. I've seen where EDLs are very helpful, again, for dynamically or manually adding content to them to make navigating change control much easier. At that point, all you have to do is account for what is in your runbook procedures so as to have some CYA. So we're gonna, I'm gonna give you an example of um, looking for some evil. I'm not gonna go terribly in depth into it, into autofocus, and then um, you know, leveraging Office 365, which ever changes as well, right? And how, how can I address um, where Office 365 resides? Um, we all have these, these, these wonderful URLs from Microsoft and others where it says, hey, these are our, uh, excuse me, these are our IP addresses for what contains our scope. That sounds great until they're 30 lines long, right? And you don't have the ability to um, parse them every day, right? So this is gonna be something that can help you out. All right. Here's your firewall, right? Nothing, nothing special. Uh, I'm looking at threats and I say, oh man, something over here looks like I want to investigate further, right? I click on here, I click on autofocus. For the sake of this demo, I go open up another tab, right? And all I did, as you can see, I just threw a query in here and inside of that query, I'm just happy to put this one file. And I uh, clicked on autofocus and this, this is what it came up with. You know, sometimes there's more data in here, sometimes there's more tags. Sometimes it's already something you're tracking with your own tags. Um, you get a little bit of context just by hovering over it. You know, this is a unit 42 tag. And uh, you can also click on, um, you know, is, is there anything going on? Passive DNS or any hashes that's, that have been observed as well, right? So here, there has been a, a hash observed. And again, for the sake of not watching or not having to watch some load, it's already here. This is autofocus. So autofocus um, automatically pivoted and said, hey, um, I've got this hash. There's something evil. Um, what do you want to do with it? Um, well, I can look here. This is great. I can click on this hash and I can say, tell me a little bit more about this file. All right? So this file comes up and I don't know my, my threat researcher mode. Says, wow, this is some good content, right? I got all these hashes here. This is all wonderful stuff. I'm not, I know you guys can read. I can pivot right to virus total uh, if you want. I can, I can do that real quick. Um, but also, hey, so, so we talked a little bit about dynamic analysis and, and wildfire, giving you your zero day um, look into what is happening, right? That's your zero day feature by Palo Alto, right? It tells you, let's, let's look at you know, maybe, hey, these are the things that were happening inside of the endpoint itself. Here's a Windows 7 machine, here's an XP machine, um, right? So it basically ran this against those endpoints. It made a bunch of changes, um, tells you how many, and this is all good stuff, right? So you could, you know, potentially leverage this to search your environment today, right? You can say, uh, what did the processes do? You know, which processes were in scope? This might be helpful to you, it, it may not, right? But lots of good content. Um, so where did, uh, what, what, what domain calls were made, right? What DNS was used, right? This is good stuff, right? It's all right here. I mean, the lazy man, I mean, likes it. You know, the, the automation is, is beautiful, right? Where, what services are talking to what endpoints? This is good stuff, or what destinations, excuse me. And uh, obviously, you know, the list keeps going on and on and on. Um, if you wanted to say, hey, um, am I vulnerable to this, right? If this should ever load, um, hopefully it will, but you know, if it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, I can, there we go. 
right? So this is when wildfire accounted for this, this threat, right? This is the signature name within wildfire. And, um, you know, th this is all pretty good info for you. No, no indicators. All right. So well, let's just say that, uh, well, actually, let's, let's look here. So you say, man, what can autofocus do? You want to build a query? Build this query, right? Research the heck out of it and say, you know, I, you can add in as many arguments as you want. You can add in uh, when it happened. You can say, you know, I, I want to leverage this against uh, my data. I want to leverage this against uh, the public's data, right? All these, all this awesome stuff, right? It's all right here, right? And it, and it makes for easy and quick pivoting and, and, and researching. So you say, okay, well, that's great. Um, what do I do when I observe something malicious happening either in the public sphere or my sphere? What do I do with it? Well, let's, let's, let's pivot over to my mouth, right? And I say, I want to create a miner, if you remember that. Okay. So fairly simple, right? You, you give it a logical name here, right? You've already made your query if you're, you know, in, in, in the programming mindset and you can do this. Sure. Type this in by hand. Good luck. I cannot do that. Um, so you say, what kind of artifacts do I want? If you had an existing processor, um, which was that, that second uh, node that I was telling you about, it, it can help right here. But for this discussion, we're, we're going to leave it. So if you remember, I don't have um, the ability to write to this autofocus environment. But this is important right here, right? I'm just going to show you, you know, some, some of the existing ones that are already out there. Um, let me look at an output, right? Okay, so this is the URL right here that you would use to connect. And we'll go back a little bit too when we, when we jump back to the firewall um, that you'll use to plug into your small dynamic list and then authenticate to that. And that's how you, you will get this content, right? There have been some changes. Um, this is just give you some metrics as to the changes to this uh, feed over time, right? This is this is just good info. Is it stale? Is it moving? Uh, the dashboard has a lot of stuff if you have your own uh, miners as well, right? And this says, hey, I'm going to insert these nodes. I'm going to process these this information, and outside of that, I'm going to have these outputs right here, right? So you can control this. You can combine this. Um, these, these sources to however you want, you can leverage existing, right? There's, there's tons of public, there's tons that are provided from uh, Palo Alto as well. So for that, let's jump back to the firewall, right? So we're back on your firewall, we say, huh, okay, now, now what do I do? So I can come over here and I can say, I want to look, now there'll already be some existing. Um, right, right here, we'll, we'll just look at this one because it's already built. Right, hopefully it'll load in a timely fashion. But basically what this is saying is I'm going to pull in a, uh, or I'm going to create a connection between my firewall and that external dynamic list. Right, so for this one, all it is, is it's gonna pull in IPs. Hopefully it will finish loading. Hopefully you guys can see that. Right, and it says, here's my URL. Let me see if I can open up another one. Uh, well, it, should, it shouldn't really matter. So, so for this one, it says, hey, I've, I've got this name. I'm going to create it called my mail, uh, external dynamic list. It's going to be an IP list. And here is the source I'm going to gather that data. Remember when I told you about the certificate profile? This is, this is important, right? So on this one, it's not going to really work um, because there's no profile associated with it. Okay. So I get these feeds. Now what do I do with them? Right? So we go back. And we say, I'm going to create a firewall rule. I'm going to start creating a firewall rule. Demo guides are not being fair to me right now. There we go. All right. So I'm just going to call this uh, autofocus block. Uh, let me go to a browser real quick, right? Same difference. Uh, let's try this. Let's see if this one responds a little bit better. 
right? All right, so it's going to roll with autofocus block, you know, one, two, three, whatever your, you know, your naming convention is. I would suggest strongly that you use tags here. So if it's an autofocus block, um, I would definitely, you know, do it here. If you need to put in, hey, it's a you know, ticket one, two, three, knock yourself out, no big deal. All right, so for this discussion, uh, I'm just throwing in some menus from the source. And for the destination, if you remember, uh, it was it started with mind meld. You remember that external dynamic list? So here, this is it. That's all I have to do, right? Um, now I'm going to dynamically populate this list. So you know, for you guys who struggle with change control, um, this should make your life a lot easier. This is not a reoccurring thing that you have to continuously touch. And you want to validate that the source data is always good. And Pretty good stuff. And also, uh, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop it, okay? So, you have that. Um, that's basically it, all right, right? You hit okay, you do your commit, normal stuff. Um, for the sake of your time, I'm gonna you know, go to our next use case. So, in this scenario, I'm gonna search, or I'm gonna just look at existing uh, my melt information. Well, let's see, I'm gonna try very hard to. No, the demo gods are not being nice to me. Let's get rid of you. Let's go to you. All right. So what I'm gonna do right real quick is I'm just gonna, I'm just, I used the use case I told you of Office 365, right? So. I had issues in the past with, with managing border firewalls and saying, you know, this is where I'm going to allow users to connect to the, to pull maybe um, to, to allow like SMTP traffic and, and to leverage you know, Gmail or uh, whatever. So in this scenario, I would say um, feeds can come in for exchange environment from Office 365, right? Okay. Well, I don't have the URL handy, but if any of you ever had to deal with a huge set of URLs and IPs, it's, it's problematic, right? So there are examples, um, and you can see just by the name, right? And we're not gonna go into super depth. We can say, hey, um, these are, this is that feed, again, right? All we have to do is throw it in an external dynamic list and a firewall rule for, all of these sources right here on the right hand side, right? So I can say, okay, I have all these, I love to see the word China, I love to see the way Germany, right? But you can critique this or um, curtail this to meet what it is that you're trying to accomplish. And you can have that feed, okay? Pretty important stuff, right? So that you can dynamically um, control what traffic ingresses and egresses your network, right? Hopefully that makes sense and hopefully you see value in all that. All right, so so big picture, uh, demo gods, they weren't too angry with us, all right? So hopefully you, you got something from that. And uh, so there is no easy button for threat hunting, right? It, it can be hard and I would challenge folks, I've seen it before mature organizations, um, where it, it is a challenge and they get burnt out on it, right? And, and, and nobody wants to be a robot or a drone and just keep doing it the same way day after day because that's how you get stagnant. Stagnation is not good. Um, but sometimes you don't even know where to start. So, you know, I, I like to say for, for EITS, uh, we're not a one-trick pony. We like to look at things holistically, right? Because your idea of threat research, you might have a... Um, you know, a methodology today. Maybe you can incorporate autofocus. Uh, it is certainly good, right, to um, to your organization, to you, and for your growth, right? The Unit 42 folks are pretty sharp individuals. And I would say um, you can, if, if you want to see this, ask, ask your Palo rep, ask us, say, hey, can I get a demo or can I do a POC of this, right? This is all value add. This is your data that you're already consuming and, 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 and leveraging today. Get more out of it. See what's actually happening in your network. Uh, there's always uh, somebody looking at data, like the showdowns of the world. They're looking at you. People are doing reconnaissance on you. 
you, you probably should be doing the same thing back to see what are the trends going on uh, short term and long term. How can you address those and make your organization that much more secure? Okay. So um, are there any questions at this point in time? And if anyone has any questions, feel free to toss them in the uh, Q&A window or chat window. But um, Carl, great job. I really, really appreciate you doing that. I think that was, um, I know for me, just a, a huge value. Um, I'm sure that's the case across the board. So um, yeah, as Carl kind of hit on everyone, a lot of you that are on this webinar are Apollo customers. And if you are a Apollo customer and you have not looked at autofocus, this is one of those things where I say, what do you got to lose? Um, experiences very minimal effort required to get it in place this is not something that's going to take you know days or, or um, you know weeks I mean we're talking hours to get this up and running um, run it for 30, 30 days um, beat at it you know if you're not doing threat hunting now see if it can help you and like Carl said if you are doing it now um, I'll take you to the next level so um, again any questions feel free to toss them out but um, outside of that I think we're uh, we're pretty much done appreciate everyone's time